You know, one of the most challenging ways to hunt a trophy mule deer is one-on-one. -on -one. Some of the most successful trophy hunters I know, that's the style of hunting they do. Last fall, I spotted a mule deer in the end of October in Montana. Now let me tell you, I've hunted this particular area for five years and never saw this buck. Why? It's because he was nocturnal. Now he's the strangest mule deer buck I've ever seen. And you'll see that in this, in this segment. But I set up like I am right here and I hunted for off and on three weeks before I was able to take that buck. And that's what you have to do. You can't lose your patience. You set up on a deer like that and you wait. I came in way before daylight and stayed till way after dark in a spot just like this, glassing and waiting. I didn't bump the buck. I didn't go into his nest and try to push him out or drive him. If you do that, you're playing right into his hand because he is, this buck was eight years old and he lived there for eight years and never was detected. And these big old bucks that you're looking for, these trophy mule deer, whether on private property or on public land, they're there, but they're very nocturnal and you're not going to get one by walking around. You're gonna to have to set up and have patience like I did and I was able to hunt for three weeks. Granted, it was during the rut, and that's Achilles' heel of a big trophy mule deer. This buck was nocturnal until the rut hit, and when that rut hit, he threw caution to the wind, and suddenly he started coming out during the day, and that allowed me to pattern him, and it gave me a chance twice to sneak up on him and finally take this buck. So come along as we hunt this strange trophy mule deer in Montana during the rut. You know, everybody knows that the high country of Wyoming has produced some good mule deer. But you know, there's other states that have good quality mule deer in sagebrush country. You can find good quality trophy mule deer hunting even down in the sagebrush canyons and coulees of the west. So don't overlook that type of terrain for quality hunting. Now this is the end of October and I'm hunting in Montana in this type of terrain looking for a good quality mule deer. So come along with me as we hunt the last part of October when these bucks are together and in bachelor groups. Here I am, I'm up on a, a bench overlooking a lot of country. This is the end of October and we're looking for mule deer. All of a sudden, one morning, this buck comes running right across this flat. I've never seen this buck before. I've hunted here for five years. I couldn't believe it. This is the most strange looking mule deer I've ever seen. I'll bet you he isn't 21 inches wide, but look how tall he is and heavy. So what did I do? I set up on this mule deer for a week. Suddenly, I found him in a patch of timber. He knows we're there. Here he is right here. He knows I'm right there. He's looking at me. He's not going to move. The reason he's not going to move is because he thinks he's hit. Now, I have a distraction here, and the distraction is I am actually mentally figuring out what he will score. I want you to notice how the wind is blowing. It's blowing from left to right. I never considered that. I set up here, I have a dead rest, he's at 275 yards, and I miss him. I can't believe it. Let's watch that again. Here's what happened. I was so busy mentally figuring out what this buck would score, and I didn't realize and take in consideration that shooting across the canyon, I'm going to miss that mule deer. I hold right on his chest, right smack dab in the middle of his chest with a dead rest. Now you'll see that bullet go off and you watch and you watch that buck, he'll turn and glance to his side as that bullet whizzes right past him. It drifted almost a foot, right there. See him look at it? Poof, he was gone. I never saw him again for 10 days. I never saw him until the rut started. I set up and every other day I would stay there all day long with my spotting scope looking for him. I knew he wasn't going to leave there. Why? 
that is his home. He knows how to get around hunters there. He is eight years old and lived there all his life, and he knows the terrain, and he knows how to get away from hunters. I sat up and I waited. The rut started coming on. We got some snow up there. Things started changing. The behavior patterns of these big mule deer suddenly changed. Instead of being nocturnal, they suddenly started coming out. Here's a buck here. This, is, this isn't this him. This is just a four point, about a 26 inch here with some does. But this is what happens. You have to be disciplined enough to sit there and wait and wait. Now I'm looking at least a mile away for that buck. This just so happens this buck was right there close to us when he came out. Finally, about the 12th of November, I'm looking in the pocket where this buck has been living for eight years. We spot a small four, four point here with some does. Now it's snowing here, and they can't see us. Like I said, we're looking a mile away. We're not going to push this buck. I'm not going to go into his area and try to drive him out or run a uh, push on him. We're just going to back off and wait until he shows himself and gives me an opportune time to hunt him. Now this is private property plus it's also public land. This buck runs back and forth between the two. Suddenly I look that morning in these pockets. This is where he's living right here. I find him and I make a sneak on him. He finally comes out early morning with his does. Why? Because it's the rut. And here he is right here. Can't mistake him. Look at him. I slip right up there, get a dead rest. There he is right there. Lived all this time in that hole. I take my time here. And wait, wait Mike. Did you see that rock jump up? I swear that rock jumped right up there in front of that buck. Oh! I can't believe I missed a second time. Look at the hole in that rock my 7mm Magnum with that 160 grain bullet did. I run around the opposite side of the peak, get over there trying to catch the buck running across those ridges. He disappears. I'm heart sickened. I know I'm going to have to sit this spot and scope up and for the next two weeks look the whole country over trying to find him again. You know, I never realized this until I got back to the studio and took this footage and slow motioned it, but I want you to look here. That buck is standing right behind a tree here. You see those two does? They were with him. Now look, right here in the circle, there he is standing there behind that tree looking at us. Now Rick comes walking up, he doesn't even see the buck either, and he's looking down the canyon. Right here, watch this. It's unbelievable, that buck is standing there watching us. Watching us, see him right there? Suddenly here comes Rick. Rick's going, well, I know that buck's here somewhere, I wonder where he is. I'm looking down and way over two ridges going, if I can just see where he's going, then I can sit up and hunt him again. I had no idea he was here. Now Tom, who's running the camera, runs it back again, zooms in on those two does. Now those two does were with him. He zooms in on them and goes to his left, and you'll notice that buck is gone now. He has dropped down into that timber right there. And I think the reason is, is we gave him eye contact unknowingly, and he bounced right down and he's hiding right there. But here's what happens. You see me here walk, in a minute you'll see me stumble. Be the reason I stumble right here is I see him with my naked eye as he's running with the does. Now he is heading out. He can't stand it. He's got to get out of the country. There he is. See him right straight there. See him right over there. See him? Tom's having trouble getting on the buck. He's looking at the wrong does. Finally he gets on him right here. Got him. 
I hit him right in the shoulder. And I want you to notice he runs almost 100 yards with a broken shoulder and has no indication of it right here. You can see I'm in a good shot on him. Dead. Now I want to let you know that this buck is the biggest body deer I've ever taken. He was over 300 pounds on the hoof, dressed. You can see right there where I shot from is about a 320 yard shot, but it had a dead rest. And this time, I was able to take him. Well, that's quite a buck here. Way to go, Mike. I mean, we finally, after, after it seems like forever looking for this buck, and we see him about every other day, it panned out, didn't it? Yeah, he's a smart old buck, and we just kept on him for three weeks here. Didn't uh, really spook him. Uh, we saw him two or three times, but it was just wasn't right, and today, he was rutting full bore, and uh, he was coming around that hill, and he's about a 320-yard shot, but I had a dead rest, and uh, what a buck. He's got over 20 inches of mass. You know, I've said before, the Achilles heel of a big mule deer is the rut. When the rut started, he came out and gave us an opportunity to uh, kind of pattern him a bit. Now, you can't pattern mule deer like whitetail too much, but we knew what area he was in, and the does he was running with, and everything worked for us today. It's a today. perfect morning.